Hey guys, it's Katie and welcome back to That Time When. If you are new here, this is my podcast where we have real honest talk about real shit I've experienced. I can give you all of the advice I wish I had that time when, hence the name. If you've listened before, you might notice a little bit of a difference and that's because I finally got a legit microphone. So we are a real podcast now. Um, I was recording before on my Apple headphones with that little like built-in microphone and it probably sounded like trash. So I really apologize for those first two episodes, but the audio is going to be so much better from here on out. I love this microphone. It is so amazing. I feel so legit. Like I'm sitting here with my big headphones on and my mic in front of me. Like I feel like a real podcaster and I'm not going to lie. I feel so cool. And I really, I am like in my element. Like this is fun. And that being said, this microphone also picks up like every single sound. So if you hear any weird noises in the background, I apologize. Um, I live on a main street, so there's like a ton of noise. There's a train going by right now. So anyways, let's get into today's topic. And instead of giving advice, this episode is going to be a little bit different because the theme of this whole episode is about how I don't really know what I'm doing. And that's because we're talking about navigating your 20s. Now, I feel like there is so much about life that you experience or have to learn in your 20s, and it's really hard. Like, your 20s are just not easy. And honestly, sometimes, like, to give you a little bit of an analogy here, I feel like I am running around with a blindfold on and trying not to run into a wall or, like, fall off a cliff. Um, (laughs) So, yeah. Let's first talk about transitioning out of college because I feel like that is a really big transition and it's not always an easy one. Now, I want to caveat that I didn't love college. Um, I really wish I did, and I have so many friends who had, like, amazing college experiences, but it just wasn't necessarily for me, and I was, like, past ready to be done by the time I graduated. Um, But regardless, like, it's still a weird time, and it's still, still a hard transition because I feel like graduating symbolizes becoming a real adult. Like, whether you see it on TV or social media or whatever, like, there's something about graduating college that I feel like people think, like, now you have to just become a real adult, like, at the snap of a finger. Um, And I don't know how the hell they expect that because, like, you have barely experienced real life at this point. So how are you supposed to know how to adult if you haven't done anything yet? Um, I mean, it wasn't too long ago that you were probably, like, blacking out at a bar or a frat house, and you probably had younger friends still in college who were doing that. But on the flip side, you probably also have older friends who started to transition on to the next phase of their life, and, like, you're just at this weird in-between. And at that point, everyone you just graduated with is in that same weird in-between situation. So you kind of just have to figure out this new chapter of your life as you go. And... There can be a lot of pressure, I think, associated with that to figure it out fast, whether it's like your parents pressuring you or maybe your friends, I don't know, or maybe it's like your job if you've already started your first big girl job or even just society in general. Like I said, I feel like society puts a lot of pressure on 22, 23-year-olds, however you were old you were when you were graduating, to just figure out adult life so far. And on top of this, It's like you're either trying to find your first big girl job or you're just starting that job. And I don't think I need to go into the stress of the job hunt. Like, I really think that that goes without saying because I'm sure we have all been there and we all know that it totally freaking sucks. But something about this that I think people don't talk about as much is just the bigger question of figuring out what it is that you want to do with your life. And I know that that kind of starts when you're 18 and you're choosing colleges, and you're picking your major, but you're not that much more grown up at 22 either. So like having to choose your life path at either age is a huge pressure for someone so young who has lived so little life so far. Like I just don't know how the hell they expect you to know that. Like when I think about myself at age 12 versus age 16, like that's a four year span and I changed so much in those four years. So obviously who you are at 18 versus who you are at 22 is going to change a lot. And like same thing with 22 to 26. So it's like who's to say that the career path you chose at 18 or at 22 is going to be exactly where you want to be at 26 either. Like it's a lot of pressure. And I mean maybe I'm the only one who thought that much into it. But it is a lot of pressure. And I guess 
it's a little bit different in college. Like I think internships are great for helping you figure out what it is you want to do. Um, but at least in my experience, my internships just gave a small glimpse at what my real jobs would be like. And I think that that can vary from field to field or whatever. But like I said, at least in my experience, like it didn't give me the full picture of what a real full-time job in that field would be like. And I don't want to say like I don't love my job because I absolutely do love my job and I love what I chose to do. But I also think it's totally normal in your 20s to kind of question if you made the right career choice or to wonder if you would be happier doing something else, especially after like a bad day at work. I know that I've had shitty days at work where I come home and I'm like, I want to quit. I shouldn't have been doing this. Like I'd be so much happier somewhere else, yada, yada. Like it's very easy to get into that mindset every once in a while. So I mean, I really do think it's so normal to just wonder, like, is this what I really want to be doing for the next 30, 35 years, whatever it is until you retire? Um, So that's why I have a lot of respect for people who decide to, like, make a career change or something or to pursue a passion project if they're unhappy with what it is they're doing because, like, that's a scary thing to just up and quit whatever it is you're doing, like, start over and start something new. But I think, like, at the end of the day, we all just want to be happy, right? Like, everyone wants to just enjoy what it is they're doing with their life. But for me, at least, one of the things that would make that so scary is the stability. Because, obviously, your job offers you a form of stability. And, like, the thought of leaving that to start over and having to find that stability again, like, that's scary. That's a lot of pressure. And I guess that kind of brings me to the next thing I want to talk about, which is money. So I really, really hope I'm not the only one, and I might make myself sound like a total fucking idiot by saying this, but I really hope I am not the only one who had no clue just how expensive it is to be an adult. Like, I remember when I got my job offer for my first, like, big girl job, and I did not have a good grasp on money, let's just say that. So I remember the day that it all happened. I was at an internship that I had the spring semester of my senior year of college. And I got an email from the HR person at the job that I really wanted. Like it was my top choice. I had been doing a bunch of interviews and this was like my top choice. This was the one that I wanted and the company that I wanted to work for. And I got an email from the HR person asking if we could jump on the phone in a little bit. So I was like, oh my God, like this is it. I'm going to find out. Like I'm either going to get the job or I'm not. So a few hours later, I get on the phone with her and I'm like hiding in a hallway by the elevators at my internship to take this phone call. And she offers me the job and she tells me how much the money, like the salary is. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, like I'm going to be rolling in it. So obviously, like I accept the job and I didn't even negotiate my salary, which pro tip, please always, 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 always negotiate your salary. Like that was a huge mistake on my part. And you should always negotiate and always advocate for yourself because no one is going to do that for you. Like no one is going to say, oh, I think, I think we should pay her more. Like people aren't going to just say that for you. So you have to be the one to say it for yourself. And the worst thing that they can do is just say no. So it does not hurt to just ask, please always, always negotiate your salary. But anyways, when I got my first paycheck, like the first big shock obviously was, holy shit, taxes are insane. It made me so sad. To this day, it still makes me so sad when I look at how much money I literally give to taxes. Not, I mean, everyone does. Like, not that I give it to taxes. They just take it. But, like, it sucks to see that, like, money you worked for is just disappearing before it even comes to your paycheck. It's so sad. But anyways, the next big shock was how much was left for me after I paid all the shit I had to pay. Like, after I paid my phone bill and my car insurance and... I'm not going to lie, I got myself into a little bit of credit card debt in college, like paying my credit card bills and all that. The money that's left for me, like it was not a lot. Like I'm not going to lie to you, I wasn't even making enough at that time to put anything into my savings account. Like my paychecks were going just as fast as they were coming um, because things are just expensive. And like I had just started this new job And I worked in an office with a lot of people who were right around my age. So it was really fun. Like, I made a lot of friends. I really did love that job. And I made so many good friends there. But, like, I wanted to go out with them after work and get drinks and, like, make friends and meet these people. 
So the little money that was left over for me was going towards stuff like that. And like, you know, grabbing lunch with people during work. And after everything was said and done, like I said, my paychecks were going just as quickly as they were coming. So this illusion that I had about getting my first job and making enough to support myself and move out right away, it was gone very quickly. And I was really quickly brought right back down to earth. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it sucked. It was a shitty realization. But I mean, like that was kind of my first, I don't want to say slap in the face from adult life, but like, yeah, it was kind of my first slap in the face to like, so this is how it's going to go. Um, and I've gotten smarter with my money as time has gone on. But of course, like the older you get, the more expenses you have. And literally nothing is cheap in this world. Like absolutely nothing. I mean, groceries, like does someone please want to tell me how I spend at least 125 bucks a week on groceries for literally two people? Like it's insane. And I know that that's cheaper than going out to dinner. Like 125 would probably be a nice meal out for us. But, like, that still is not cheap. That's a lot of freaking money. And another thing that's not cheap, um, getting your car fixed. I recently had to get new brake pads and rotors on my car. And literally, it was close to a grand. And, like, it's not like you can just not get your brakes fixed. And that, on top of it, that's, like, a maintenance thing. So, it's not like, oh, you pay it one time and, like, it's fixed. Like, no, that's something you have to do every once in a while. And it's, like, almost a grand. Like, that sucks just to keep up with your car if you don't own a car like and you live somewhere that like owning a car isn't necessarily like a necessity I guess good for you because it's so expensive to keep up with a car and also another expensive thing that like I think we can all relate to is rent so I want to talk about moving out because I was not prepared for everything that goes into living on your own um like I said rent is expensive and once I had a better concept of the value of a dollar I realized how absolutely absurd the cost of housing is like I I also live in Massachusetts where housing is some of the most expensive in the country but I do not know where these people get off thinking they can charge the rent they do like it is so nuts to me and on top of that housing is competitive like I feel like when I was apartment hunting I would see a place I liked I would email them and it was either already gone or they had already gotten um, like dozens of other applications like it's not easy to just find a place sign the lease like it's all yours I mean maybe sometimes it is but like I feel like for a lot of people like it's a tough process and then when you do finally get ready to sign a lease like there are so many questions that you have to ask when you're looking at these places and like when you're getting ready to sign and I don't know how some people just know what they're supposed to ask like literally when I was going on my first apartment tour I sat there and I typed into google what are you supposed to ask when looking at apartments like a full question <laughs> and I put everything into a note on my phone like all the things I figured I was just supposed to ask because like I had no idea so then you finally get the place and like you're getting ready to move in and if it's your first place like my current apartment is for me then you have to literally start from scratch like you have to get everything like a couch a coffee table a kitchen table all your kitchen supplies like utensils um all kinds of stuff like you are literally starting from scratch so aside from that being first off very expensive it's also stressful because like you start to realize all the things that you didn't know you would need like as you get more settled in I think you start to realize like oh shit like I actually really need that or the little things that made your house a home like when you were growing up just like the little stuff as you're getting settled in I feel like so many more things come to light that you probably should have but you just you don't because you don't know like no one necessarily hands you a list of everything that you need and they tell you okay go to Target check this all off like a school supply list for your first apartment <laughs> would be so convenient. Maybe I'll have to put one of those. I feel like those probably exist on the internet, but I should make one. Anyways, also maintaining an apartment or a house or wherever you live, like that's a lot of work. And I have so much respect for my mom now because just keeping my little apartment clean totally freaking sucks. And I have no clue how she did that for a whole house our entire lives. Like, I take back everything I ever said. I realize now how shitty it is and how much work it is. Like, knowing how often you have to dust and clean your floors. Like, not just sweep or vacuum, but, like, clean your floors. 
and clean your counters and clean the bathroom and like just everything like it's a lot of work <laughs> so besides like learning how to do all of that stuff and learning how to adult once you're in your own place um one of the things that was tougher for me was just moving out in general and there's a couple of things that made that hard about me so first thing was I lived at my parents house until I was 26 I moved in with my boyfriend last summer um so from the time I moved home my sophomore year of college um by the way I moved home after my sophomore year of college and I commuted to school for my last three years I went to a five-year school so for the last three years I commuted and then I just moved out at 26 so I was home for a while um but I felt so much pressure to live on my own and to be honest I was kind of embarrassed to tell people that I lived at home with my parents because I felt like literally everyone I knew had their own place and like it was kind of like a scarlet letter or something to be living with your parents like I was really embarrassed to say that obviously like my closest friends I didn't care but like when people ask like oh where do you live I was embarrassed to tell them like I was living at my parents house um but looking back like 26 is young and I should not have been embarrassed at all so if you're still at home please enjoy it because you're saving so much money and you're also getting time with your family that's going to pass by very quickly once you're on your own so I really think that you should enjoy that while you have it and that kind of leads me into the next thing that was really hard for me about moving out in general and this I guess for me feels a little embarrassing to talk about because I feel like I've never really heard other people talk about this, or at least people I know, but I was really homesick when I moved into my own apartment. Um, I've always dealt with homesickness, like, my whole life, even as a kid, like, I couldn't go on, like, vacations with friends because, like, I would get so homesick, and, like, even summer camp, I lasted three days at summer camp instead of two weeks because I, like, that's a funny story, maybe I'll tell another time, but I literally, like, threatened the camp director to let me call my mom so I could go home after three days because I could not hack it but I didn't realize how hard that homesickness would hit me when I moved out of my parents house like the first couple of months I was honestly a little bit depressed because I missed home so much like not seeing my dogs every single day made me cry a lot like my dogs I'm obsessed with them they are the loves of my life. They are perfect angels. They can do absolutely no wrong in my eyes. And the one thing I kept thinking about is like, oh my God, I'm never going to wake up to my dogs jumping on my bed ever again. Like it made me so sad. I cried a lot about my dogs, but also just like missing my family and all of the comforts of home. It was like, it was hard to adjust to. It was not easy. Um, I'm one of five kids, so I have a family of seven, and at the time that I moved out, the only one of my siblings who wasn't living at home was my older sister. I'm the second oldest, um, and I have a brother who's like 10 years younger than me. He's 16, going to be 17 this summer, and it was nice to be able to be around for him as he was growing up. Um, my sibling, my other siblings and I, were all closer in age, so obviously growing up, like we all had each other and we could play with each other, but he didn't really have that because he's so much younger than all of us. So at least being able to be around while he was growing up was like really nice and he's still young so it's like he's not even out of high school yet and it's like it would be nice to be around while he's you know going through high school um so I was sad about maybe missing out on some stuff there I mean I still get to see him all the time like I do see my family a lot um I may have talked about this before but my job is like five minutes from my parents house so I do get to see them a lot not right now because of quarantine because I'm staying in my apartment um but I do get to see them a lot but it's not quite the same as living there um and that makes me a little bit sad and I'm not sure if I'm the only one who went through this or if people just don't talk about it but it was really really tough for me and I still have my days sometimes that I miss living at home like literally last night I was crying in my bed trying to fall asleep because I just missed my dogs and I was just sad about not having my dogs around so like I still have my days and if you are going through the same homesickness I am um it's okay I think it's normal personally but like I said like I'm still a little embarrassed by it I don't hear people talk about it um but anyways I do want to talk more about moving in with my boyfriend and dating and friendships in your 20s but I'm saving those for their own episodes so there will be more to talk about with navigating your 20s because I feel like there is so much to talk about with this um 
So we'll have some more dedicated episodes to that. So stay tuned. Um, but I'm trying to keep these episodes under like 30 minutes or so. I want these to be like easy listens for you guys that you can kind of just listen to while you're like doing a couple of chores around the house or like, you know, driving around or whatever. Um, but I do want to say that I think your 20s are tough and no one really prepares you for all of these years and there's so much that you have to learn and adjust to and figure out um, and it's really not easy but I think there is some comfort in the fact that we're all going through the same thing so like as much as you're kind of figuring it out on your own at the same time you're also not because like other people are just trying to figure out the same thing you are and I want to say that I think everyone hits different life stages at different paces so where you're at in your life it's totally okay. Um, like just because, you know, some girl you went to high school with is already married and bought a house and she looks like she has all her shit together doesn't mean she really has it all together and it doesn't mean that you need to either. Everyone lives life at their own pace. It's your life. However you're doing it, do you. Like I really think you should live life in a way that feels right to you and feels good to you. Uh, because I really believe in not having any regrets. Like I firmly, firmly believe that you should not have any regrets about how you lived your life. And when you look back on your 20s, I think that you should feel good about however you chose to live it. One of the things that's most important to me, like the thing that I really, really want out of my life is just happiness. Like I want to look back on my life and feel good about the things that I did and the choices that I made and the experiences that I had. So I'm trying really hard to just make sure that you know, I'm staying true to myself. But again, like that can be tricky. I feel like this is a time when everyone's kind of figuring out like who they are and what they stand for and what they want to be in their life. Um, and that's hard. So I don't necessarily have like all the advice for you about how you're supposed to like live a life that's true to you or whatever. Um, but I do think like whatever you're doing right now and however you're living your life, it's okay. And I know that comparing your life to someone else's life is really easy to do, especially with social media and you see everyone's glamorous lives and people are only posting the good shit. Like, let's be real. People aren't posting the bad shit. So it's so easy to compare yourself and wish that you had what this person had or whatever. Um, But their path is not your path. Like, live your life however you want. If something feels good to you and it's something that you think is going to make you happy or it's something that you've always wanted to try or always wanted to do, just freaking do it. I don't necessarily believe that like you should do absolutely whatever you want and like travel the whole world and quit your job because you know it's your 20s why not you can't possibly screw up in your 20s (laughs) like I don't think that's necessarily true I guess I'm more of a realist in that sense whether that's right or wrong I don't know but I also don't think that you should be one of those people who is like living your life to work like I see so many people around my age who are putting in all these crazy hours at work and they're doing all this overtime to try and prove themselves at such a young age and it's like no like again this is like you're young you should live your life like that's time that you're not going to get back so you should leave the office at five don't work all these crazy hours like make sure that the time that you have for you you're spending for you and doing what makes you happy I think we live in like this society now where I don't like the word hustle culture, but I know a lot of people say that now, and I guess that's, like, the best way to explain what it is I'm talking about, but, like, I don't think you should just be, like, burning yourself out in your 20s. Like, why do you want to get so burnt out at such a young age that you're freaking miserable until you retire? Like, I don't believe in that at all. So, like I said, like, make sure that you're taking the time for you. Like, you're working hard to set yourself up to have a happy and successful future, whatever success looks like to you I'm not saying that that's just like career and money but make sure that you're doing those steps to set yourself up but also that you're taking the time to figure out what it is that makes you happy and what's going to make you feel fulfilled for the rest of your life um I just think like time is short and you know we only have so much time on here on this earth to like figure out what makes us happy so like I said like my number one priority for my life is just happiness and feeling like I experienced the things that I wanted to experience and I'm happy with where I ended up And I hope that everyone else finds the same. And this is getting so, like, philosophical and preachy, and that is so not me. Um, (laughs) But anyways, I guess the moral of the story, just take your time in your 20s. Like, live life at your own pace. Do you. Do what you gotta do. Um, But I think that's gonna be it for today before I keep getting super rambly. Um, So please 
subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts. We are now available on Apple Podcasts, so please leave a review there. Tell your friends. Follow me on Instagram at that time when pod. Comment on my latest picture. Let me know how your 20s are going for you, how you're navigating your 20s, whether it's difficult, what you found easy, everything, whatever. Let me know. Um, but until then, we will have a new episode up next Monday. So I hope you guys have a great week and I will talk to you soon.